Hello everyone, Solo Sue here. If you've been following my channel at all, you know that I've been on a number of cruises since the cruising restart last year. And during that time, I have been taking measurements to find out what the Wi-Fi looked like on each ship. While some cruise lines claim to have the fastest Wi-Fi at sea, I wanted to see if it was true. At least for those ships I've been on anyway. So we will be looking at ships from Carnival, Royal Caribbean, and Princess Cruise Lines for this video. Now before you all comment below about how vacations are supposed to be all about being unplugged and relaxing, the reality is that not everyone can do that for the entire duration of a cruise. Some people's jobs don't allow them to be out of touch, or in my case, if I am going on vacation at a potentially critical time for my work, I may only be able to do that if I am able to get some kind of work done during the trip. Other people may have responsibilities to children or other family or loved ones that make them uncomfortable with being completely unreachable for the duration of a cruise, even a short one. Others may simply not want to give up their connectivity and would actually feel more stressed completely unplugged than they would being able to have working Wi-Fi and internet. Whatever your reasons for wanting to maintain connectivity, the speed of the internet can make or break your decision to go on a cruise and on a particular ship or even an entire cruise line. To that end, I started taking measurements, a standard internet speed test for each cruise I was on so I could tell people what I found and they could make their own decisions. To do this, I ran the same internet speed test on each ship on a sea day. I didn't want the proximity to land to be a factor, so I made sure not to take any measurements while we were in port. Now, just to level set, here is the internet speed test run from my laptop on my home network in California. I have Comcast Xfinity as my internet provider, and as you can see, these are the speeds I am used to dealing with. I have been fortunate to have a job that allows me to work from home for the past 10 years, and so having sufficient internet speed is very important to me to be able to do some of the aspects of my job. I regularly do video conferencing, for example, and I need to be able to do that if I ever hope to be able to work from a cruise ship. I also have this YouTube channel you are watching, so upload speed is a consideration if I'm planning on doing any posting of new content to my channel during this trip, or if I hope to be able to do a live stream, for example. So with this in mind, let's go to the first cruise I took in 2021. It was Carnival Panorama, a seven-day cruise to Mexico from the West Coast. Carnival offers three tiers of Wi-Fi plans, social, value, and premium. Given my needs, I chose the premium Wi-Fi plan, which says it will support anything from email to video calls. This is supposed to be three times the speed of their value plan. The base price is $13.60 US per day, which would put the Wi-Fi cost of the seven-day cruise at $95.20. Here you can see the results of the internet speed test. The test detected not even one megabit per second download speed at 0.53 megabits per second. It's really kind of sad. The upload speed actually couldn't finish. It just sort of hung on this step, despite many tries. And so I finally just had to stop the test and record the data that I was able to get. If we're feeling generous, we'll say it too came in at around half a megabit per second. Not stellar speed. I had expected it to be low given the performance I had been experiencing just doing basic tasks like responding to email. It was painfully slow, just on social media sites like Facebook and YouTube was not even an option. This was their premium internet package, and it bills itself as being able to support streaming. It falls short. Significantly. The next cruise was on Royal Caribbean's Ovation of the Seas, going to Alaska. And they actually claim to have the fastest internet at sea in their marketing materials. They offer two performance levels, the Voom Surf Voyage package, which is largely for texting, web browsing, and checking email, and then the higher speed package, which is the Voom Surf and Stream Voyage package, which supports the same texting and web browsing, but adds streaming of videos, movies, music, and shows to its description. 
Given my need for internet speed, of course, I purchased the Surf and Stream package, which cost, as you can see, $111.93 US for the seven day cruise. How did they fare with their speed test? Well, it was faster than Panorama, I'll say that much. However, this is not exactly stellar either. I expected more from the fastest internet at sea claim. It was certainly an improvement over the Carnival ship and was considerably more usable, but it still lagged. I would not even consider trying to do a video conference at this bandwidth. The next cruise was on the Grand Princess going to Mexico. Princess makes the claim that their medallion net internet is the best Wi-Fi at sea. They have a great video explaining how they are achieving their performance. I will leave it linked below if you are interested in seeing the technical details behind their claims. I found it an interesting video. They don't have a tiered system for their internet like Carnival and Royal Caribbean have. They have pricing based on the number of devices instead. The single device package is $9.99 US per day. This was a five day cruise, so the total would have been $49.95 for the whole trip. But since Princess has been running deals where you get the internet, the drink package and gratuities included, I didn't have this as a separate expense. However, since I travel with a phone, an iPad and a laptop on all cruises, I found having just one device at a time kind of annoying. You actually have to log out of one device if you want to start working on another device. On future cruises, I opted to upgrade to their four device plan so that I could leave my laptop connected in the cabin and potentially uploading files while I was still able to use my iPad and iPhone around the ship for connectivity. I might just be spoiled when it comes to staying connected just a little. Anyway, I was pleasantly surprised at the change in speed on the Princess ship. It was over 10 times faster than the Royal Caribbean ship and so far ahead of the Carnival ship as to be laughable. Imagine my surprise when I tested the next ship. I went on a 10 day cruise in the Caribbean on the brand new Enchanted Princess. I'm not sure if it was a function of location, you know, the Caribbean versus Mexico, or if it was just the fastest technology was on the newest ship, but there was really a significant difference. It was quite a bit faster even than the Grand Princess was, and that was the fastest to date, so that was a very nice surprise. I was able to conduct a successful Zoom call with video and three participants, and so I know now that if I scheduled a cruise during my day job's silly season, I would be able to successfully work from a cruise ship, as long as it was a princess ship. My final cruise was on Carnival Radiance, and here is the result. It is slightly better than Panorama was, but it's still nothing to brag about. Since Princess is a Carnival brand, we can only hope that the technology that has made the internet so much faster on their ships will eventually be implemented across other Carnival brands. And that's it. The results of my tests of internet speed across three cruise lines and five ships. The Enchanted Princess wins for the best internet among them. I will be continuing to run these tests as I take more cruises in the future, so as I can add ships and new lines, I will release an updated video. For those of us who like their connectivity at sea, I hope this information has proven useful. Please let me know in the comments if you like to stay connected while on vacation, and if you have seen similar speeds to what I am showing here, or if you have a ship that you know of that has had really good internet speeds. In the meantime, I hope you will subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell. It really helps the channel and according to my channel analytics, over 90% of you have not yet subscribed. I am trying to reach the 1000 subscriber goal this year, so I would really appreciate your help. Until then, Solo Sue signing off.